this this moment is up there. I don't now even I'm, care. I don't I'm even care. For someone to to work with to do an instructional for this. Yeah, so, that's right. <laughs> so, so I make sure it it continues right. <laughs> yeah. I, got it. it is it, it was like for me just because i remember being a white belt and doing this move and in fact the way we started but, talking was and, in and honor that's of, what i was gonna say you know a first time white belt starts or whoever what is the first thing that they do in the close guard they go forward and yeah. then the coach tells them oh no you have to posture up which is hard to do right because the guy is pulling you I right. it, it's I but also like shout out to uh, Ty, uh, Tyrone Elliott, your opponent, for having an incredibly cool attitude about the, like just like yeah, the guy. He's, like, a, yeah, he's, a nice, he's a really nice guy. Yes, yes, and he's one of the youngest ever uh, black belts in the UK, I believe. He's, he's very good. You know, like I, when you talk about this particular thing, and this is something we talk about as black belts because like there's this whole kind of code of ethics i guess you can say where it's considered like rude or whatnot to, to go with like, which is which is why i made that post after uh, after the fight right i didn't see it but I, did you would you address that i imagine that the yeah idea yeah of, yeah just right. just look into my instagram you see what i said about about it because everyone said all oh, disrespectful or oh, was it just <laughs> you know i mean well, no it wasn't just it wasn't just people it was the commentary team as it yeah, was happening it started from we them. were saying like yeah, what this I, 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 I need I to really watch it to find out but i did yeah, like yeah. they were shot they were like first it was i was watching it live i actually did the story for Jiu-Jitsu because they don't know so the was, technique that's why yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. no they were like oh why is he doing that they're like is he setting up yeah. to pass like so but i but my, i want uh, you to know I hmm. never doubted you for a second. I was watching it. I never doubted you for a second. I'm like, this I, guy I is know, a hero. Uh, He's a champion. He's going to do I it. I know uh, a few guys that are very good at doing that move too. So it's I'm by no means the creator or the first guy to do it. I just I just managed to hit it on uh, on higher level and I guess in Polaris against the black belt. My idea going into this fight was because I saw Tyrone fight with Luca and he had a draw with Luca Nacoreta. Which, by the way, the master triangle. Well, what an amazing guy! Super nice guy. Uh, and uh, Tyrone uh, played a lot with the lapels, tied him up in in some guards, and Luca wasn't able to get his game going, and they had a draw. So I was thinking, if he's going to put me in the close guard, that is, would be the best strategy because to grab the lapels, you have to put your arms outside, right, and pull the guy in, which leaves totally this exposed. And so I, I took my time there and I managed to get the to get it. Yeah, and the rest. And you know, no. I at a certain level, like if a white belt did this to me or a blue belt did this to me, I would pull them aside and tell them, first of all, if a white belt caught me in Ezekiel, my closed guard, I would open my guard up, put my feet to the hips and do anything I possibly could to break that grip. You know what I'm talking? <laughs> if you watch that video, it seemed like Correct, Your but opponent. that's impossible to do if you do it right. And that would be too late. It's like um, everyone says, oh, just armbar the guy, but I am too close for you to armbar right. me or to put your well, hips actually, on my that's, hips. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back really quick just because yeah. that's that's an interesting thing you brought up because right before the choke, it looked like yes, Tyrone that, was that, going yes, to yes, the That armbar. is the moment I bring my head closer and tripod into it and him trying to turn his hip and go for like an armbar makes it tighter. But and that's when he goes out. The point the point I'm trying to make is this is like as black belts, mm -hmm. like we are very fully aware of what an Ezekiel choke is, right? And we are very fully aware that like there's a point of no return. Like if you get both of yes. your grips. In in a way, at that point, let me give you the example, is the fully extended armbar. What's the escape right. there? You tap. That's the escape yeah. there. Yeah, there's yeah. no way out of that. But yeah, yeah the, see, he's he's starting to collapse. He's 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 done. The point, yeah. right? The, where I'm trying to get to with this is this: is that like, just because there are things that are of poor etiquette, and I'm not saying this is, I'm not saying this at all, one way or another. I really don't. I don't care because, in my opinion, it worked. Who gives a shit? Your arm got up. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like you punched him in the face. You know what I mean? You hit a submission. It just had to be from closed guard. Cl it's perfectly clean legal. choke. Yeah, yeah exactly. Clean, clean choke. choke. Yeah. Exactly. There's a certain point 
in black belt's minds where you're drilling and you're training from the from from the beginning stages of jiu jitsu like like i said if that would have been a white belt going for an ezekiel choke from my clothes guard i would have not allowed him to lock his hands up first of all to get to that point but i would afterwards say hey you know what technically you're not supposed to do that at this level because it doesn't uh, work. i would not teach you uh, at my class or in my uh, academy i would not teach a white belt to do this for sure not yeah. right but here's the rub like mm -hmm. as a black belt like it's our job to be creative and catch other black belts off guard and that's and that's another thing right if i if you do what everyone does you don't have any element of surprise you don't innovate anything for example uh, let me give you an example right i like to take the back but i will never be at the level of Tommy Langaker taking the back and I'm practicing uh, to do crab rides and, and uh, stuff like that and yeah I want to know how to do it but to get to such a high level to do that I think would be very hard right whereas you can you can um, should I say take a move see that you have success with or realize that it works or maybe it's something that people are not really aware of and make that your best and now you have a special move right and no one else has it so it's it's really hard to and because uh people will not know how to defend this right everyone knows more or less how to defend the back let's say but yeah, yeah. I, I get it i don't i agree with you 100 i don't think that yeah. as a black belt like anyone should have a problem with this. I, it's funny because I can look, already hear. And yeah. look, this is another thing. You will learn the rules, right? Let's say the rules of jiu-jitsu. Uh, posture in close guard, let's say, right? Right. Uh, I don't know. Stack at an arm bar, okay? Let's say some rules like this. I know the rule, right? So I can break it. Right. This one, that's, that's right. And that's... Because and I know I'm breaking truth. it and I'm aware yeah. of that. Yeah, that's the truth. And that's you're, why you're accepting the risks. That's why it's yeah, exactly. that's why that's what makes it that much better because you know All right, the rules. You maybe I go for this and okay, he arm bars me and I tap. Okay, but I knew I took that risk, right? Right. Yeah, there you go. I right. kudos to you, my man, because that because <laughs> no one in their no one tells uh who's the guy in the UNFC, the Russian guy who finishes the the, the Olenek. Uh, Olenek, Olenek, right? Alexei Olenek. Yeah, yeah, no one tells Alexei Olenek you're not supposed to let your opinion come to mount, right? <laughs> but yeah. he, he he sure hell does it a lot and he ends up getting yeah. the submission because he has that no yeah. you know, Ezekiel. So, so if it works Alexei Olenek has some details and some adjustment only only he knows and that makes it work for him. From any position right i also have some details and some adjustments to the grip to the way i do it and position my body which makes it work for me yeah that's i i i i need to fully hijack this this podcast for a little go bit, just sorry, for a second I'm because go, go. no 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 it's this is all great but uh, dino i'm not gonna lie i'm a journalist yeah, i yeah. wanted to have you on just to talk about yeah. you know the, the the events and more learn more about you but i also wanted to have you on for purely selfish reasons because go, go. Yeah. I am a huge – the Ezekiel choke is my favorite choke of all time. I love it. It's like my yes, favorite thing I saw thing the video ever. you're doing it, right? I, I yeah, it. so my first uh, win as a blue belt in any mm – -hmm. like I didn't even – I won one match after this tournament. Yeah, but I my first it. ever yes, win yes. was with the Nogi Ezekiel choke, and it was mm -hmm. against everyone's recommendation, and I – only locked it up because I panicked and it was all I knew mm -hmm. how to do. I wasn't even really thinking. And so I ended up letting my opponent get back to like, put me back in full mm -hmm. guard. Oh yeah. But I, I, I commented I and I told you, look, look to put pressure. You don't want to be on your knees, right? Yeah. So that's what I mean by tripod. Just come up on your toes and drive into the, into your grip, into your hands. And that makes it stronger. So you like, but I also heard that putting like ear to ear is a big thing with Ezekiel choke. Uh, what, do you try and close the gap that much? No, if I'm ear to ear, I cannot extend my hands. Okay, Th this is going to make me more that. annoying to everybody in my gym, just because I yeah. want to. I'm not going to go hunting for it, and I, I think that for a lot of our viewers, we would love to know any de like for the, our viewers who are higher levels, who are not white belts. Yeah. Like full disclaimer: yeah, yeah. white belts and blue belts. Uh, 
Ezekiel responsibly. And that includes mm-hmm. me. All right. I don't have mm-hmm. the, the, uh, I don't have the free pass to go and take risks yet, but for some of our higher belts, what tips can you offer for locking, like for noticing when the Ezekiel is there from closed guard and how to execute it? Okay. I'm going to give one tip in detail that will make a big difference. If you put your hand like this, right? The hand that's over the face. Can you see? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The guy's going to grab your fingers 100% to defend. If you put like this, it's not enough surface and it's painful, but the guy can resist. So I put my hand like this, like a paw. Oh. Like this, all the way across. I don't put it here. I, I, any choke I do, and this is more or less what I always go for, is chokes, gi, no gi. I want to cover everything around. So my arm is around the neck and the other arm is fully across in front of the face. And and this was the this was how your hand was when you locked it up against yeah. uh, Elliot. Yeah. That's a good yeah. detail. I that is a really good detail. My fingers still work in that. Yeah, manner. and you like go. this, <laughs> you can put this side of your of your hand, and it's a bigger surface, and you can cover it all the way across. Let me ask and you another question. Grab your finger like this. Right. I have when I when I work my Ezekiel's like I'm mm-hmm. not as I'm not a very good Ezekiel. I could probably count mm-hmm. on my fingers and toes the amount mm-hmm. of times I figured it's Ezekiel. One of the biggest things I have a problem with is my fingers giving out on the grip. Mm-hmm. Like when I grab mm-hmm. the grips, like I can't maintain the grips on my fingers long enough to you put mean the, the grip pressure. in the sleeve. Yeah, the grip in the sleeves long enough mm-hmm. to keep the pressure on to finish mm-hmm. the choke. Do you have any tricks on that or should I just not be a bitch? <laughs> uh well uh my fingers hurt yeah <laughs> that's fine but it's if good. you would put if you would put your hand uh deep like your fingers deep it will not be mm-hmm. so much pressure on your fingers right if you just grab a little bit with your fingers then it's gonna hurt yeah so you try to put your fingers deep like almost to your knuckle my man I I've done Ezekiel's with my my left hand so much that I think the the side of my hand and my pinky is it's always hurts now. So I've actually yeah taken I a do break it with both while. hands. I I broke this uh, hand in a MMA. F- uh, you probably can't see, and it hurts every time I do it with one hand. But I still do it. <laughs> <laughs> get swollen yeah. sometimes yeah, man, okay. my fingers are so gnarled anymore man like i this yeah, this yeah. one here in my left my left hand my middle finger here in my right hand it's just like i it's i'll hit it the wrong way and like my whole arm will just shut down in pain uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shit to look forward to you for you kev your fingers just don't really work anymore oh no i my like for real i've already started noticing what my jujitsu old man injuries are going to be and for like it's my left Left, like left hand pinky and my right ankle so far because like that's, my right that's ankle what it is got, right now next well, week it'll be your right hand ring finger and your <laughs> oh well no i think no because this is but like i got like a my last tournament before quarantine i actually got kyotera foot locked uh, on my right foot so fast and i didn't have time to tap so the ref heard the pop before i tapped and stopped the fight <laughs> And so that's been hurting for months now. My hand has been hurting for longer than that. So I'm just, it's only going to get worse. I understand that because we're all crazy <laughs> people that do this. <laughs> yeah. You, you oh. learn to kind of live in that pain, man. Well, Dina, yeah. you got You got any, uh, any closing okay. additions you want to add? Anything you want to bring up before we, uh, before we get any, any insights or anything you want to talk about? Well, well, what you just said, uh, about things that are gonna get broken and hurting, yes, but it doesn't have to be like that. And I'm I'm fortunate to to start this always uh, so to start early a strength program and stick to it is what one thing you can always do. And and I do yoga, yoga for BJJ, and uh, I did also I'm also an instructor in that. And and shout out to Sebastian Brosh, which is really really cool guy and. That's one thing you can really do to keep your body good. And in terms of fingers, my fingers hurt. But considering I've been doing this for almost 12 years, I think it's not so bad. And just ice them when they hurt and, and stop gripping so much, you know. Don't have to yeah. use that gear all the time. That's the truth. That's one thing I could <laughs> that's, say, yeah. That's, that's really funny you say that because one of the things I always talk about, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that's going to get a grip. 
and hold mm-hmm. on to it for my dear life. It's like it's easy. Like if I give this grip and you break okay, that, now grip, let's now be realistic. Competition, you're never gonna let go of the grip, but right. in training, you can. Right. Yeah. That's that's a, yeah. that's another good that's another good analogy. Like learn how to learn I mean, how like it doesn't really can matter. Play a more open game, and you know. Right. Yeah. My my coach Chris has a really good. Uh, saying for instances like that, uh, knowing the difference between you know competition and practice, there ain't going to be a practice champ. You know, yeah. there's not a there's not a championship uh, gym, in practice. Uh, gym champion uh, makes no, doesn't yeah. really matter. You know. Yeah, no, exactly. I, and, there's uh, no gym champ. And uh, I stopped trying to win in uh, in training for a very long time now, and just has benefits. That's what happens when you get that. That's what happens when you get that knowledge of black belt. You start to realize that I can still do jujitsu and enjoy myself, and not have to worry about who's winning on points. It's just about loving the art, and you get better when you can do that too. Yeah, try and most things. most people that train with me would would say that I fight much better than I train. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, same. Wow, I'm, I'm backhanded a, compliment. <laughs> I, I know it's true. I never give. Mo- you're not going to get my best. Uh, a, yeah, it's what like, I need sometimes. Not even I'm about ready. giving your best; it's just trying to improve. And if you try to improve, you are gonna fail at some point because you're trying new things or you're not giving your, I don't know, your hundred percent strength. So, you know. well, I think that's an incredibly healthy way to to look at something that often causes people to to forget and just try as hard as they can in the moment. You know, I think taking. Mm-hmm taking that wide lens view and just and calming down and realizing that, you know, everyone is here to get better, you know, so you're, you're helping everybody well, else out by not going for blood every time. I wish it was like that, but not, <laughs> not everyone is there to just get better. Some people are there just, just to, you know, to win or just to relieve some stress maybe, but you know, depends. And anyway, that's, that's how I see oh, things. Oh, man. Things. All right. Well, well, Dinu, uh, before we, we close, I'd love to know yeah. if there's any uh, – I know you're just like it, like days removed uh, from a, a massive performance that was very short notice, and now you're in quarantine for a while. Uh, yeah. Any any uh, any events on the horizon, any plans uh, in your in your view right now, or are you just playing it by No ear? idea. No idea. No <laughs> illegal training. That's for sure. I didn't say that, right? No. And uh, I don't know. It's it's really sad and, and frustrating times at the moment. And uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to be you know positive. And I always train and and keep training. I do daily like yoga and kettlebells and you know. But that's, uh, a, that's actually something I wanted to bring up really quick, and that's because a yeah. uh, friend of the show, former guest, uh, bodybuilder turned MMA fighter Martin Ford came on and and talked about how the the gyms are are very much stop and go in the UK right now. How is mm-hmm. the jujitsu scene faring right now with the with the potential second wave coming? Is it is everyone just training in basements and and backroom doors? <laughs> With the wind, with the curtains drawn. I, I, I cannot know or say, right? Ah, <laughs> but I see no, you there, YouTube bud. Is doing is doing really bad, and it's uh, very sad and frustrating to to see this. To be honest well, with you, yeah. and hopefully are, there's light at the end yeah. of the tunnel. It seems like they got a vaccine working on, and they've got some ideas of what they're going to do. Hopefully, we can get back out there and start training. Like I have the luxury uh-huh. of living in in Florida, and like no one cares in florida like it's like there's it's like there is no pandemic in florida <laughs> like it's 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 it is what it is i guess out of class on uh monday night it was literally like 60 people in class on monday night <laughs> like i'm just in my mind like i'm consciously aware of the fact that there is a pandemic and when i go to the store I put a mask on and i come trade to the gym and there's 60 people sweating and breathing on each other yeah, like yeah. i hope i hope i hope for the best anyway kev I love you. I got to get running, man. I'm about to Yeah, uh, real quick, Dinu. Uh, the, yeah. Usually at this point of the show, we let uh, guests shout out any sponsors and stuff they have going on. And uh, if you floor is yours, if you got anyone you want to shout out real quick. Thank you very much, guys, for, for having me. My, my sponsors are, are Scramble, Yoga for BJJ, Cave Bomb, and uh, Turtle Massage, uh, Prop, 
Touch Twina is another massage therapist. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to to learn some jujitsu from me, you can check my yes. channel on YouTube, and hopefully soon I'll have some instructionals. And if you ever have a question, just just answer me. Uh, ask answer, ask me, and I will answer you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and also I'm gonna personally uh, plead with uh, Jiu Jitsu Times, uh, one of the sponsors we have on the website, BJJ yeah. Fanatics. Get this man an awesome. Ezekiel yeah. DVD oh, yeah. it's, it's series. We need it. Be, we yeah. need it yeah. yeah. next week. Let's I get to actually, Ezekiel. it's not my best joke in the gi. But, it, that does uh, not, uh, even matter. Does not even matter. Does not even matter. jokes for days. <laughs> I am yeah, sorry, hopefully, Dinu. Hopefully I'm sorry, but you're you're like I, no matter what you say, you're the Ezekiel guy now. Right. You don't yeah, pull yeah. off. Now that I have kind to do it again. Shit. Yeah, dude. ride this horse to a bust, you, my man. And you now know, it's gonna like, be harder it, because everyone knows it's coming. Right. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I have faith. You're gonna pull it off. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, this is. I will have a video at some point showing that. Yeah.